30 years old, that it was like a little guitar riff. And I, I uh, wrote a song. <laughs> it was right after 9-11 that I wrote this song. And it was a tragic time in, in our history, too. I didn't know where in the world this little thing was ever going to fit in any song. And all of a sudden, it became the intro to this song, Don't Tread on Me. But I had two or three songs like that that I just had ideas for. And they, they were like 10 years down the road uh, mm. that popped in. But this was a very old one. It was just a little guitar riff, which it was like crazy. I didn't even, I mean, it's like, where did that ever come from in my mind, you know? And mm. all of a sudden when I was writing this song, oh, this is the beginning of that song. And it's like 25, 30 years old, you know? It's like, my goodness. I just couldn't find a place to put it. And you'd have think, well, you'd have forgotten it by then. <laughs> but that is divine intervention. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> mm. Yeah, that's the way I, I would look at it. Yeah. You mentioned your country classics. What type of songs can we expect on that? Because didn't you record Lonesome Town? I did record Lonesome Town. Um, yeah, that Because Ricky Nelson had a big influence on my life. I mean, when I was a, a little, um, you know, well, he wasn't that much older than me. Uh, but um, I remember just watching the Ozzy and Harriet show. And the one instance that really got me was when he was singing over a baby crib, Bebop Baby. And then at the last verse, he's at the high school gym auditorium singing the last verse with his whole band and everything. And it's like, Oh, you know, I want to do this, you know, if he can do it, I can do it too. I thought, you know, a well, little did I know he was in such a, a, a show business family, you know, but uh, he, he had such an influence. So doing Lonesome Town, I was trying to pick the right song um, to do. And uh, Lonesome Town just seemed to be, um, uh, to, to be the, the perfect one for me. Now, most of the songs that I did were not they didn't go way back to the 50s. So they weren't like the Porter Wagner and, and uh, they were more of the contemporary uh, songs. When Val Gray actually came to me and said, would you like to do this project? Now, Val recorded my I Still Have Dreams album. I don't know if you know who Val is. Yes. Yeah. Um, and so and we've been friends since Buffalo Springfield days. I mean, he was he was in a group out there. And also then his partner, who helped uh, finance the, um, uh, the project was actually the guy that introduced me to Nancy yeah. years ago. And for, so, I mean, there's a whole connection with us, but you know, we, everybody's off in their own little worlds and I live out here in Colorado uh, away from everything. But, but yeah. when Val came to a, I, I was doing a benefit for um, autism in California, he and, and, and Michael and another friend, an old road manager of Buffalo Springfield came, and that's when they presented the project. And I said, well, let's think about it. What, what kind of songs are you thinking? And, and you know, where, where's, are we going to be on the same page with this? So he said, well, we'll write out a few songs, and you write out a few songs, and I'll have Michael send a few songs. We'll see. Well, Val's number one song, and a song that I had wanted to record for I can't tell you how many years was on both of us were like the number one song. And it was a song by John Barry called Your Love Amazes Me. Right. And uh, yeah. you know the song? Yeah, I do. And, and uh, so I thought, well, right then we can get we can do something now. John actually came in and he sang on the project, which is really cool. That's wicked. so uh, and I'd never met him. Uh, and, and all, but when we uh, started to do the song, we reached out. So I've got, uh, I'll list off a few of the songs that we did. We did um, I'm Already There by Lone Star. Uh, we did uh, Walking in Memphis, a Mark Cohen song. Uh, we did uh, Somebody Like You, Keith Urban. We did The River, um, uh, Garth Brooks song. We did I Hope You Dance, the Leanne Womack uh, song. I, I tell you, Louise, this is like when I listened to it, and I, I have to tell you this little bit, too. Uh, I had some, uh, you know, some rough recordings of it, and I went down and, and did a little birthday party for a friend of mine down south, and um, they're big country fans, big country music fans, and I, and I said, hey, I want you to come out to, to my car, because they didn't have a place to play the CD in there. And I said, listen to this, and said, I want to know if when you hear these songs being so familiar, with the artist that actually made them hits, 
is is this something that distracts you when you hear you know my version because we didn't do karaoke i mean we 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 made them our own songs i mean you know that you're listening to uh you know walking in memphis but you're not hearing the piano you're hearing a guitar riff yeah. the, the the part and i tell you they went crazy in the car and so when when you listen to this it's like listening to just a compilation of greatest hits and it's like I mean, I'm just, I'm, I'm knocked out with it. Val really did a wonderful job. I sang probably 95% of it live in the studio um, with the band as we were recording in Nashville. Of course, there's tweaking. There's tweaking in everything. Yeah, Don't if I tell you, you know, unless, unless you're a Pavarotti or somebody, you know, you go in and you... you know, <laughs> You just sing through the thing and you don't have any miscues. No, that's not me. It's uh, see, how old was I then? I guess I was 75 when I did this. And, uh, so, uh, but to get 95% of it to where, you know, they just had a little tweak here or there, you know, and, and had the, had the vocals. It's, uh, it's pretty amazing. And I'll tell you what, it just blows me away. I mean, it's, it's really, it's really great. So th those were, those are some of the songs um, that we did. Uh, I'm trying to think if there was another special one on there that, oh, there's a song by uh, Buddy Miller that I had also wanted to record. And actually his wife, Julie, wrote it called Written in Chalk. And we uh, we did that. And it, it's so fun to be able to be in a studio where you have gathered musicians. And some of these guys came to me and said, you know, I played on the original of this. Oh, no. <laughs> I, I love it. It, it was pretty cool. <laughs> but just to be in there with such great musicians that you're so confident that they're, I mean, you know, they, they run a song down two or three times and that's it. You know, they're, pat I mean, once they do, so, you know, you do what you can do to help. And there's nothing like singing a song when the, re when the, when the track is going down, there's so much, um, energy and you, you, it's just different than when you go into overdub a vocal when you're just okay i got the earphones on now no it's when that when everybody's out there just pumping to get, and we're all on the same page going it's just oh it's so cool it, it's going to be a, a fun project called richie fure in the country you sound as though this is probably one of the best things you've ever done uh without a doubt you know mm -hmm. but you know what i think that about every project <laughs> they, come, they come out so far and in few and in between you know like this is the best project i've ever done but this this certainly is uh just uh it, it's it's a fantastic project and i'm so glad that uh, val came and asked me to do it and now they're trying to say let's do another one and i'm thinking oh, yeah. oh, my goodness sakes. Yeah. Okay, so I, I don't know what's going to happen with that but we'll have to wait to see how this does when it comes out do you think this might actually bring you to a whole new wider audience, a whole new demographic of, of listeners? It, it could. It could. And, and that would be really special as well. You know, I mean, I, uh, hey, years ago, you know, we and a few other bands started, you know, what was called country rock, you know, California country rock. And, yeah. and uh, we were pioneers in, in that field. It, um, you know, it, it could open the door. Poco really didn't have or the, the, uh, the recognition maybe that I feel that it could have or should have, but somebody had to pioneer the, you know, turn up the rough soil, you know, and, and pave the yeah. way for the Eagles. <laughs> well, yes. I mean, people forget the huge influence that Poco had on the Eagles. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. I was, we were a farm team for their bass players. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, exactly, Randy, exactly. Randy and Timothy, you know. <laughs> but didn't they have the most beautiful vocals? Oh, yes. And Timothy is on my new project. He's on In the Country with me. Yeah, he and my daughter uh, sang on, I think, uh, four songs together. So um, they, they're... Uh -huh. uh, yeah, so it's good. Yeah. Yeah. Because you did the back porch sessions with Randy as well, didn't you? Yeah, Randy came yeah. in and, and we've got, um, you know, we're hoping to do another one of those here real soon and right. get that out. And, and but, it, you know, with the, with the way we can do things today, it was really sweet to be able to have Randy. You know, I hadn't when we recorded the uh, Troubadour session, uh, when I recorded the Deliverin album, mm. I had not really seen Randy. In, uh, in I don't know how many years, it'd been, it'd been many, many years. And it was so nice to see him come and also to have Timothy there at the same time. So all three of us were together in, in one place at the same time. And so um, it, it, it was really sweet. Yeah, but to have Randy uh, participate on, on that, 
um, you know, was, was really special. And he really was thankful that he was asked. And, and I'm, I'm really glad that, that we asked him to be a part of it, you know.